Hi, my name is Konstantin Baum. I'm a master of wine and today we're playing around with the world's most widely used wine app, Vivino. I often meet people who tell me how great Vivino is and I recently had a conversation with a fan about the usefulness of their descriptions and their ratings. So I'm going to put their descriptions to the test and I will blind taste these wines and see whether I can match them to their descriptions from Vivino, which are printed on these cards. So we are going to find out whether a swarm of wine lovers can produce great wine descriptions or not. So um, shall we find out? Let's go. I'm regularly surprised to see how many wine enthusiasts are using the wine app Vivino. I don't think wine professionals are as excited about the app and I rarely use it, but that doesn't really matter. There are more than 60 million users on the platform who've added more than 250 million ratings and close to 90 million wine descriptions. Quite impressive. In addition to the rating and the tasting note, you can also find a taste summary that shows you, for example, how light or heavy a wine is. You can also see which flavor groups are mentioned most often in the wine descriptions. So there's quite a lot of information there. I'm curious to find out whether a group of wine drinkers can really create wine descriptions that help me make educated decisions. I therefore asked Leon to pick six wines that I don't know. I'm going to blind taste them and then I'm going to try to match them to their wine descriptions from Vivino. This is going to be a little bit different, but I think it's going to be fun. So let's dive in. All right, wine number one is very fruit driven, fresh. There's apple and pear flavors coming through. On the palate, it's quite round, rich. There's also acidity there, but it's not the most pronounced acidity. For me, this appears to be like a Pinot Gris style or a Lugana. We had Lugana quite a few times, to be honest, when I touch this bottle and this bottle shape kind of reminds me of one Lugana producer. But yeah, I don't really know. I think this is a fruit driven, quite vibrant, fresh, well-made white wine that isn't extraordinary, but pretty nice. Wine number two is more tuned down. It's less pronounced in its aromatics. There's a little bit of apple there, but it, yeah, it's less pronounced. I think this could be many things. What really points me in one direction is the slight pepperiness, the white pepper that I get on this wine. This reminds me of Grüner Verdlina, but it could also be a Pinot Blanc. It could be maybe even a Shannon or something, something like that. Not very aromatic, but pretty interesting. I really feel wine number three, it's not aromatic again. It's quite yeah, delicate in flavor. There's again like this white fruit, apple, pear character, but there's also quite a lot of yeastiness there. And there's tomato sauce for whatever reason. Not necessarily something that I often get in white wines. On the palate, it's fresh, vibrant, good structure. There's also a little bit of yeah, creaminess from contact with the lees. Could be a Chenin Blanc. It could be maybe um, something that I don't know, some weird grape variety. It also reminds me quite a bit of Albarino, and this is, I think, where I'm going to land here. I think the yeastiness, the freshness, the vibrancy, the grip, concentration, that's kind of Albarino for me. Wine number four is a red wine, and it's quite a dense and concentrated red wine. The color is very dark, really purple. It smells quite spicy. There's black, blackberry cassis flavors coming through, a little bit of pepper as well. The palate is actually grippy, the tans are quite harsh, so there's a lot there. For me, this could be Cabernet, this could be Syrah or Shiraz, this could be Malbec. Syrah because of the pepperiness, Cabernet because of the structure of the tannins. But I think actually, yeah, just looking at the overall composition and the color of the wine, I'd say it's probably a Malbec. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's French or Argentinian. I mean, there are other options, but those are the more obvious ones but I'm probably going for France here. Wine number five is kind of lighter in color. It's also lighter in flavor. There's even some strawberry there. So not dark fruits, but more red fruits, plus a little bit of dark fruits. On the palate, it's actually quite juicy, round and velvety. There's also some sweet oak here. I would say this is probably a Merlot and I don't see this as a old world wine. I think this is more a new world kind of plush and brown uh, style. I'm probably going for California here. Could also be Washington State. There's some great Merlots coming out of Washington. But yeah, I think I'm in California here. Brown and juicy Merlot. Sometimes blind tastings are not just about taste, smell 
and what you see in the glass. Sometimes it's also the weight of the bottle. This is a super heavy bottle, which kind of already points me into one direction, even though it could be lots of different options. But um, yeah, I already have something in mind. I hope I'm not going in the wrong direction just because of the weight of the bottle, but the flavor kind of confirms that to me. There's raisins, there's really ripe fruit, there's cherries. It's kind of rich on the palate. There are also some tannins there, but there's also quite a bit of sweetness. Um, so for me, this reminds me very much of uh, Primitivo from Puglia, from the south of Italy, like made with raisin grapes and made in a really yeah, rich and brown style. There's also quite a lot of sweet oak there, vanilla and so on. So that's consistent with Primitivo from Puglia. So now let's get into the big reveal. I have these six envelopes with tasting notes here. I'm just picking them in a random order and I'm going to see whether I can match them. Let's go. I'll start with, what is this? Turquoise, green, whatever. This one. So the tasting note reads intense ruby red color in the glass. On the nose, very powerful, complex aromas of plums, black cherries with notes of tobacco, vanilla and spices. On the palate, full bodied with soft round tennis, tannins, not tennis, <laughs> and a very long finish. Cheers, for whatever reason. Under what does this wine taste like? It says it's pretty bold, it's kind of smooth, it's in the middle between dry and sweet. So there's some sugar there, but it's not really sweet and it's pretty soft. And the aroma groups are vanilla, chocolate, plum, blackberry, and cherry red fruit. Okay, for me, this is kind of easy. I think the description really well encapsulates the essence of wine number six, a rich, full-bodied red wine with a little bit of sugar. And yeah, like I said, I think this is a Primitivo from Puglia, probably a pretty good one. Um, those wines are often bottled in these big bottles and let's find out whether I'm right. Okay, I know this label very well. I actually think, have, haven't we tasted this wine before on this channel? I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, it's Sessandani Primitivo di Manduria, one of the most famous producers from the region, one of the most famous labels from the region. And let's see whether my yeah, the description is actually for this wine, for the 2017 Cantina San Marzano Sessandani Old Wine Primitivo di Manduria. So, one for one. So let's move on to the pink envelope and let's see what the description says. Dark fruits, leather and earthiness, young structural and thin medium plus body, medium tannins. So there is a WSET student at work here. Medium acidity, dry. 3.8 is the rating, I think. Well, it says grape, but it's blacked out. And then plum, dark fruit, oak, black cherry, black fruit, leather, earthy, palate, plum, blackberry, black cherry, dark fruit, black fruit, leather, earthy, black, plum, mint, slate, cheers. Does it always have to say cheers in the end? I don't really know. But this description for me is a little bit wild. Um, I think actually mentioning too many flavors doesn't really help. This describes a pretty earthy wine that also is leathery. Um, the tannins medium. I'm really not sure whether this is uh, matching what I would have thought this wine might be from the aromatics alone. It actually says it's more of a bold wine. It's between smooth and tannic. It's pretty dry, but not totally dry. And it's between soft and acidic. Yeah, to be honest, I think this is not a great description. My feeling is that this describes wine number four, the first red wine, uh, of which I thought this was a Malbec, maybe from Cahors in France, could be Argentinian, but I'm just going to come down on France, Cahors. Um, but yeah, I think this description doesn't really give me all the information I want. I'm also pretty sure that this wine is 100% dry and it's actually quite tannic on the wine taste indicator. It actually says it's more towards smooth and kind of in the middle. I actually thought it was quite intense and tannic. 
Um, but anyways, let's see whether I was right. So this is wine number four for me, quite an edgy, slightly spicy wine. So that is correct in the description, in my opinion, but it's quite structured. So the talents are much more forthcoming than what the description kind of indicates. Lots of talents. So I think this description is off. And it didn't really help me. Also, this is 100% dry. I think this might have maximum one gram of sugar. So I don't think the description is really good. I don't think this taste indicator is really spot on on this wine. Yeah, that's just my feeling. So I said wine number three is a Malbec from Kaor. So let's see, first of all, whether I was right there. And it is a Malbec from Argentina. So that was kind of my backup option. I think it's quite a structured Malbec for it to come out of Argentina, but Zucardi is a top producer from Argentina and their wines tend to be a little bit more structured and earthy. Um, but yeah, this is 100% dry and it's tannic. It's quite intense. But let's see whether this description was for a totally different wine. And it is Zucardi Siri R Malbec. So, this is this wine. So you got that wrong, I tell you. Well, no, I'm not going to complain. I just don't think that this description was all that helpful. So now we are moving on to the baby blue envelope and let's find out for which wine this is. On the nose, almond blossom, peach, citrus, flinty minerality, rich and viscous, mouthfeel, yellow peach, apricot, Lemon zest, pink grapefruit, whetstone minerality. You all know what I think of minerality, but anyways. Bitter green almonds, saline finish, very refreshing with lots of acidity. Wow. So it's kind of in the middle between bold and light, according to the why, what does this wine taste like thing. It's towards dry, but not really dry. And it's kind of between soft and acidic. And I'm not really sure which wine this talks about. In my opinion, in the description, there's again too many flavor indicators. I think there's scientific research stating that you can't really identify more than three flavors in one liquid. And these are clearly more than three, so quite a lot of them. So I don't really think it helps me in this case. And in the taste summary, I think the slider between dry and sweet isn't really useful because we just had dry wines here and this is again almost in the middle between dry and sweet and yeah there wasn't an off dry white wine and i think this is a white wine from the description so i don't really think that makes a lot of sense it's also kind of contradicting the description here so the acidity is between soft and acidic and it actually says in the description very refreshing with lots of acidity so there's a bit of a contradiction there. However, I think from this description, I would go for wine number three, the wine that I thought was an Alborino. I think peaches and apricots are flavors that are found in here. I didn't find any notes of yeastiness in the description. So I think that's an um, important element in this wine, in my opinion, at least. But let's first see whether I was actually right. Okay, I was right. It's uh, Alvarino from Vigno Verde, and it's one of the best producers in the region, Sol Solaliero, I think it's pronounced. Um, a really great example of um, this wine style. Beautiful. But let's see whether the description was actually for that wine, because I'm not so certain. It could have been wine number two as well. But let's have a look. What the... So this description is actually for Car de Frati Frati Lugana. And I thought wine number one was a Lugana. And I'm pretty sure that it's actually this wine. And I think the description just, yeah, that just doesn't work at all, in my opinion, for Lugana. I, I think the minerality, bitter green almonds, the salinity, that's for me, sorry, that's definitely not Lugana. I actually agree now more with the slider between dry and sweet because I think there's some residual sugar there to give the wine a little bit more plushness and roundness. But in that case, the description was off. Very ref refreshing with lots of acidity. No, this is more of a 
pleasant mouthfeel kind of wine that is round and rich. I, I, I don't understand. So let's do the baby pink envelope and let's see what is in there. <sighs> Lots of lingering flavors from start to finish. Texture is creamy and light with a tingling of flavors popping through. Hints of oak and herbal botanicals bring a sophistication to the well-balanced lime green apple lemony peach and dried apricot. So it actually says the wine is light, it's dry, very dry, and it's acidic. So it's high in acidity. But from the flavor, I'm a little bit confused. I, I don't get the oak, the herbal botanicals, maybe. I don't actually find the essence of any of the remaining candidates in this description. So leftover, we have the Solaliero, which we now know I identified correctly in the blind tasting, was an Alvarino. And the other one would be the wine that I thought was a Gruner Feldliner. And I, I think both of them didn't have any oak. Um, there's no pepperiness here from the Gruner Veltliner. There's no, none of the yeastiness of the Solaliero. I mean, it says texture is creamy and light. Creamy, I understand. So it could really be both wines. I don't really, I'm, I'm really unsure. So because it says the texture is creamy, I'm going for the Alvarino again, but it could really also be the, the other wine. I'm just really unsure here. But hints of oak, I don't think this was oak age, but I can get how you might think this is slightly oaky. I cannot understand that. So I think... This is, this is, this. Let's find out. Yes. Quinta de Soaliero Primeras Viñas. So this is actually the young wine's wine. So the entry level. And it's already pretty damn good. And I'm happy that I actually matched this wine correctly this time. So let's move on to the white envelope. Kind of boring. Let's see what the description says. Pale yellow with medium plus intensity, another WSET student. Dry, medium plus acidity, medium alcohol and body with aromas of lime, apple, ripe pear, bell pepper and wet stone. Quite youthful, quite good, medium class wine, not worth of, of salaring. So this is clearly a white wine because of the pale yellow with medium plus intensity. I think for me, this is more white pepper, but I can understand what this person is indicating on the taste profile it's more towards light it's very dry it's more towards acidic and i think this is actually wine number three the one that i thought was a Gruner Fettliner. let's see so i actually got that wrong wine number two was the wine that i thought was a Gruner Fettliner. and i think this description is pretty spot on i think yeah it makes quite a lot of sense and I'm kind of confident that I'm right. But first of all, let's have a look whether this is actually the wine that I thought it was. Grüner Veltliner from Austria. And Grüner Veltliner from Austria. And from one of the top producers in the Wachau, Domain Wachau in Austria. A really great producer run by a fellow MW. And this is a good entry level Grüner Veltliner. It's not, nothing to rave about. I actually had a Riesling from this estate from 1982, fairly recently. And that was just beautiful. I don't think this is as long lived, but they produce some wines that can, yeah, that live for a long time. This is more the fresh entry level kind of style. Great with a Wiener Schnitzel. Let's find out whether the tasting note was actually for this wine. Domain Wachau. Yeah. Wiener Wettliner Federspiel. So, got that right. So, as we've now got all of the white tasting notes out of the way, I can reveal this wine, which is the Ifrati Lugana from Cardel Frati. To be honest, like I said, I kind of already identified this from the bottle shape. This is a pretty special bottle shape. So, sometimes the bottle really, really helps. Um, good example. I just completely disagree with the tasting note on Vivino. I'm sorry. So the last tasting note is bright orange and 
Let's see what it says. Nose of dark fruit, oak, chocolate, violet, mint, and dried herbs. Palette of blackberry sauce and crushed blueberries with a heavy serving of vanilla extract. Licorice, black pepper, and nutmeg. Wispy tannins, lengthy finish. The taste summary says it's very bold. It's between smooth and tannic. It's dry and it's between soft and acidic. So I actually think this is a fairly good description of the wine number five. Especially the, the description, the tasting note is pretty much spot on. I think it's a little less tannic than indicated here. Maybe also not as bold. It's not like full on bold. I don't think this is like the the Primitivo, that was full on bold. This is maybe one step down. It's not a light wine, but not the most bold wine. Um, but yeah, I feel comfortable with matching this to wine number five. So from the tasting notes, there are no real indicators what this person thought this wine might be. I thought this was a Merlot from California. Because of the richness and opulence and the roundness, the vanilla, I get that as well. Might be some American oak in here, um, but let's have a look. Whoa, okay, okay, damn. So I was kind of halfway there. It's from California, but it's a Cabernet Sauvignon. I just think it's a very smooth Cabernet Sauvignon and it's a very light colored Cabernet Sauvignon. For me, this is more Merlot in style. I mean, the color, look at the color. It's kind of, you can see your hand through it almost. Yeah, I don't think this is the most typical Cabernet, but it's a really well-made wine. And I think the description here was pretty spot on. So um, let's just confirm. Yeah, this is for the decoy Cabernet Sauvignon. Yeah, so this was fun, different, kind of interesting as well. I think, um, well, I wouldn't trust the descriptions on Vivino 100%. I think somewhere really useful but some were a little bit too much too many descriptors and maybe not the right ones to put me into the right direction i mean you all kind of played along with me so maybe for you the descriptions were spot on just comment down below and let me know what you think about those descriptions i think it sometimes helps to have the advice of a professional someone who's done this lots and lots of times before. Maybe there are also some tasters on Vivino that write really great descriptions. I just didn't think they were as helpful as the descriptions I find on the websites of real professionals, but maybe that's just my taste. My favorite wine from this tasting was easily the Solaliero, a really great expressive Alvarino. So this is definitely recommend it. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers this year. So tell your friends and please do subscribe. It really helps me out. It helps out this channel. I uh, hope I see you guys again soon. Until then, stay thirsty.